Hi welcome back to the world of technology. Edu IoTech. In the previous video, we discussed the physical design of IoT in terms of general blocks. In this video, you will learn, the architecture of IoT in terms of protocol layers in IoT. Before going ahead, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Edu IoTech. Hit the bell icon, to receive continuous updates. As discussed earlier IoT devices communicate with each other, and central nodes, using the internet network. The IoT protocols is such a system, that will transfer the data online, with safe communication of devices. Well-known protocols used by IoT-based applications, in various layers are Datalink layer Network layer Transport layer And, the application layer. Let's have a look. First, data link layer. Link layer protocol determines how the data is physically sent over the network's physical layer or medium. That is copper wire, coaxial cable, or a radio wave. This is some link layer protocols, which are relevant in the context of IoT. Link layer determines how the packets are coded and signaled by the hardware device over the medium to which the host is attached, such as a coaxial cable. 802.3 Ethernet it is a collection of wired Ethernet standards, for the link layer. The shared medium in Ethernet, can be performed using twisted pair cable, coaxial cable, or optic fibers. Data sent by source can be received, by all the connected devices based on its capabilities. It is a method of packet-based physical communication in a local area network that is LAN, and maintained by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE. These standards provide data rates from 10 Mbps to 40 Gbps and higher. This is often used 802.3 protocol standards. 802.3 is protocol standard for 10 base 5 Ethernet, which uses coaxial cable as a shared medium. 802.3i is protocol standard used for 10 base D Ethernet over copper twisted pair connections. 802.3j is the protocol standard used for 10 base F Ethernet over fiber optic connections. 802.3e is the standard used for 10 Gbps Ethernet over fiber, and so on. Wi-Fi is a wireless networking technology, that allows devices such as computers that is laptops and desktops, mobile devices that is smartphones and wearables, and other equipment such as, printers and video cameras, to interface with the Internet. These standards provide data rates from 1 Mbps to up to 6.75 Gbps. For example, 802.11 operates in the 5 GHz band, 802.11b and 802.11g operate in the 2.4 GHz band, 802.11n operates in the 2.4 or 5 GHz bands, and so on. 802.16. WiMAX. IEEE 802.16 is a collection of wireless broadband standards. That is worldwide interoperability for microwave access, is a family of wireless broadband communication standards based on the IEEE 802.16 set of standards, which provide multiple physical layers and media access control options. WiMAX standards provide data rates from 1.5 Mbps to 1 Gbps. The recent update 802.16M, provides data rates of 100 Mbps for mobile stations, and 1 Gbps for fixed stations. 802.15.4 A technical standard which defines the operation of low-rate, wireless personal area networks. It also provides, compatible interconnection for data communication devices using low data rate, low power, and low complexity short-range radio frequency that is RF transmissions. These standards form the basis of specifications, for high-level communication protocols such as ZigBee. It also provides data rates from 40 kbps to 250 kbps. These standards provide low-cost, and low-speed communication for power-constrained devices. 2G, 3G, 4G, Mobile Communication There are different generations of mobile communication standards, like, second generation that is, 2G including GSM and CDMA, third generation that is, 3G including UMTS and CDMA 2000, and fourth generation that is, 4G including LTE. IoT devices based on these standards, can communicate over cellular networks. Data rates for these standards range from, 9.6 kbps that is for 2G, to up to 100 mbps that is, for 4G. Network layer. 
also called as internet layer. The network layers are responsible for sending of IP datagrams, from the source network to the destination network. This layer performs the host addressing and packet routing the datagrams contain the source and destination addresses, which are used to route them, from the source to destination across multiple networks. Host identification is done, using hierarchical IP addressing schemes, such as IP4 or IPv6. IPv4. Internet Protocol Version 4. The most deployed internet protocol, that is used to identify the devices on a network, using a hierarchical addressing scheme. It uses a 32-bit address scheme, that allows two raised to 32 addresses. As more and more devices get connected to the internet, but these addresses got exhausted in the year 2011. Then, IPv4 has been succeeded by IPv6. The IP protocols establish connections on packet networks, but do not guarantee delivery of packets. IPv6. Internet Protocol Version 6. It is the newest version of Internet Protocol, and successor to IPv4. It uses 128-bit address scheme, that allows a total of two raised to 128 addresses. It also provides a location system, and identification for computer systems in the network. It is IPv6 over low-power wireless personal area network specially designed for devices, which have limited processing capability. It operates in the 2.4 GHz frequency range, and provides data transfer rates of 250 kbps. It works with the 802.15.4 link layer protocol, and defines compression mechanisms for IPv6 datagrams over IEEE 802.15.4 based networks transport layer. The transport layer protocols provide end-to-end -end message transfer capability independent of the underlying network. The message transfer capability can be set up on connections, either using handshakes as in TCP, or without handshakes acknowledgements as in UDP. The transport layer provides functions, such as error control, segmentation, flow control and congestion control. DCP Transmission Control Protocol The most widely used transport layer protocol that is used by web browsers along with HTTP, HTTPS application layer protocols, email programs that is SMTP application layer protocol, and file transfer that is FTP. DCP is a connection-oriented, and stateful protocol, while IP protocol deals with sending packets. TCP ensures reliable transmission of packets in order. TCP also provides error detection capability, so that duplicate packets can be discarded, and lost packets are retransmitted. The flow control capability of TCP ensures that the rate at which the sender sends the data is not too high for the receiver to process. The congestion control capability of TCP helps in avoiding network congestion, and congestion collapse which can lead to degradation of network performance. UDP User Datagram Protocol a communications protocol that is primarily used for establishing low latency and loss tolerating connections between applications on the internet. It speeds up transmissions by enabling the transfer of data before an agreement is provided by the receiving party. Unlike DCP, which requires carrying out an initial setup procedure, UDP is connectionless protocol. UDP is useful for time sensitive applications that have very small data units to exchange and do not want the overhead of connection setup. UDP is a transaction-oriented and stateless protocol. It does not provide guaranteed delivery, ordering of messages and duplicate culmination. Higher levels of protocols can ensure reliable delivery, or ensuring connections created are reliable. For more details about each protocol we will go for another video. For more updates please subscribe the channel. Application Layer Application Layer Protocols define how the applications interface with the lower layer protocols to send the data packets over the network. The application data typically use files as a transfer mechanism. Files are encoded by the application layer protocol and encapsulated in the transport layer protocol, which provides connection or transaction-oriented communication over the network. Port numbers are used for application addressing, for example, port 80 for HTTP, port 22 for SSH, and so on. Application layer protocols enable process-to-process -process connections using ports. HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol It is a foundation of the World Wide Web that is www. HTTP includes commands such as, get, put, post, delete, head, trace, options, etc. 
The protocol uses request response communication model. It is a stateless protocol. An HTTP client can be a browser or an application running on the client that is an application running on an IoT device, a mobile application or other software. It uses universal resource identifiers to identify HTTP resources. Constrained Application Protocol It is an application layer protocol for machine-to-machine -machine that is M2M communication. Where applications are meant small embedded devices, controlled environments and controlled networks. Similar to HTTP. It is a web transfer protocol and uses a request response model. However, it runs on top of UDP instead of TCP. It is also designed to support commands like HTTP. WebSocket allows full duplex communication over single connection for sending messages between client and server. It is based on TCP, which establishes a connection before transferring any data packets. Once connection is made between client and server, same connection is used for stream transfer until closed by the client explicitly. MQTT Message Queue Telemetry Transport It is a lightweight messaging protocol. It is based on the publish, subscribe communication model. MQTT uses a client-server architecture, where, the client such as an IAT device connects to the server which is also called MQTT broker, and publishes messages to topics on the server. The broker forwards the messages to the clients subscribed to topics. MQTT is well suited for constrained environments where the devices have limited processing and memory resources and the network bandwidth is low. XMPP Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol It is used for real-time communication and streaming XML data between network entities. XMPP powers wide range of applications including messaging, presence, data syndication, gaming, multi-party chat and voice or video calls. It allows sending small chunks of XML data from one network entity to another in near real time. It is a decentralized protocol, and uses a client-server architecture. It supports both client-to-server, and server-to-server -server communication paths. It allows real-time communication between IoT devices. DDS Data Distribution Service it is a data-centric middleware standard for device-to-device, -device, or machine-to-machine -machine communication. It uses a publish-subscribe model, where, publishers for example devices that generate data, create topics to which subscribers for example devices that want to consume data, can subscribe. DDS provides quality of service control and configurable reliability. AMQP Advanced Message Queuing Protocol It is an open application layer protocol for business messaging. It supports both point-to-point -point and publisher or subscriber model, routing and queuing of data. An AMQP broker manages messages flow through the network. It receive messages from and route them subscribe consumer. This is done using queuing technique. Published messages copied into two queues. Messages are either delivered by the broker to the consumers, which have subscribed to the queues, or the consumers can pull the messages from the queues. If you have any query, you may write in the comment box. In the next video we will learn logical design of IoT. If you like the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel EduIoTech. Hit the bell icon, to receive the next updates. Also share it with your friends, and let everyone know the IoT. See you, in the next video, goodbye.